Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. I boxed out about three or four faces. What's cracking, y'all? This is an other edition of the Smoke Box for Be Real TV, and I got a very special guest, a good friend of mine, and man, you know, I gotta say thank you for man. jumping in the box. Ocho MC8 in the motherfucking house. Yeah. Yeah, real rap speed of program. program. A dub CB is summer jam. Hood with the first year, lope 100. One of the West best motherfuckers don't want it. I gotta say, off the top, from way back, from Compton's most wanted days, you know what I mean? Because that was the first time I got put on to you way back. And you were one of my favorite West Coast rappers back then. And progressively, you know, like each record after you made with Compton's Most Wanted to your solo shit to, to it, it features. You just continued to kill it, man. And and you know, you remained one of my favorite rappers forever, dog. And then and then you know what was a highlight for me was I got to fuck with you yes, on indeed. two songs, the remix for Till You Set in the Air. Right. Step into the park in the hill, you can't hang. The original baby gangster on this Compton's thing. Don't slip the late night hype. And uh, what was the other one? one? The other one was um, uh, uh, Prelude to a Come Up, That's my where shit. you fucking smashed that shit. We these the three amigos, skates with Nick go plates under the sea, and we goes East Coast, West Coast, anybody chilla, soul assassins, gets the cash is smashed. And I always would tell motherfuckers, man, because you know people would ask me, you know how how is it working with eight? I said, man, it's easy. You know, he comes prepared, he knocks that shit out. But the, the, the biggest thing is that I, I said, man, you know, you got to hear eight on like East Coast beats and beats right. that aren't just West Coast so that you could hear the full potential of the man's ability. Because I got to hear shit you did with like, you know, Primo early on and right. other cats and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, what What made you decide to go that that direction? Because, you know, when you're a West Coast rapper, you tend to stick to what what's West Coast, right? I mean, you know, I always, I tell people, B, I grew up on a lot of East Coast music, you know, when I first, you know, got introduced to hip-hop, I listened to a lot of East Coast cats, so I just had respect for, you know, Cats like, you know, Pete Rock and CL Smooth to Gangstar to yeah. Muds with 783. Right. You know, I was a fan of East Coast music, so it was always easy for me to work with people from the East Coast or get down on East Coast beats because right. I always had that feel for East Coast music, you know. And I'm not one to just be one side and then just stick yeah. to some West Coast music. You know, I'm from the West Coast. I feel when you know hip hop and you be deep within, you, you should be able to adapt to any kind of music. Exactly. You know and, and I think that was what, what was so fucking cool about it is that those of us who knew you and knew your ability when we heard you on shit like that we were like, hell yeah, that's what's up. And then I think the other half was like surprised because they're like, damn, this motherfucker's flipping it on some shit. Exactly. And I think taking people by surprise like that was a great move. Another great move you did where you took people by surprise was your role in fucking... No hey, homie, you need some help? Uh, uh, uh. Punk ass nigga, come on. That shit was awesome. I mean, it's to me, that's like one of the iconic gangster roles in terms of street gangs because you got your mafia movies, right. like Godfather's Goodfellas, and shit like that. But then you got your street gang movies, you know, like American Me, Boys in the Hood, Menace exactly. Society, and shit like that. And you know, in terms of all those movies, there's always a character you remember that stood out. And your character was fucking dope. Because you were checking these two motherfuckers exactly. as their G. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, as a motherfucker who comes from that. Exactly. That's you know, why it was, it was kind of easy to portray, not say act in the movie, but, you know, coming from the streets and all that. You know that. It was kind of easy to portray the role, so... You know, working with Alan and Albert, I could be like, man, you know, we don't do shit like that, or we don't do this, yeah. or we don't do that, you know, you gotta, it was more of me ad-libbing certain things in the movie, so, 
they let me be who I could be, you know what I'm saying? And you know what's cool about that, because watching it from my shit, you know, like, I could totally relate to that shit, you know? A lot of us that live that life could relate to it, especially how you, how you fucking, you know, like, were their G and, like, put them in check and, like, you know, called them out on their bullshit. Exactly. You know, because that's what the G's used to do to us when exactly. we was put under you, them. Put you in check real quick. Real quick. Keep you in line and, and make sure, you know, whatever you're supposed to be doing, it was done according to how they had done it in the past. So, you know, it was kind of the leadership role, you know. Yeah. Did, did you have to, um, did they cast you for that off the top or did you have to go? You no, know? I had to go read and all that. So, you know. I went and read a couple of times, and then they called me back a couple of times, and then I think we was on tour somewhere, and they called me. They called and you back. You know, I had to roll, so. I know you had to feel crazy it about was, that. I felt good because seeing, like I said, come from seeing Colors, and then from seeing Boys in the Hood with Cube, who had just did that. Yeah. It was like, oh man, you know, I get to play one of those roles in the movie, so it, it was kind of exciting for me, man. And you had some pretty goddamn good scenes scenes there too. Yes indeed. You know, yes, they, they, indeed. They, they gave you some good they action gave me scenes. Some, they gave me <laughs> some significant scenes which I appreciate because you know they could have easily gave them to Lorenz or Tyron but you know they let me get out so no, that you, was You good. held your own though. That yes, was indeed. the thing and yes, I, think they, I think they sent, sensed that like yeah okay we can put more in his hands. So I think they're going with the plan you know and especially with somebody who, who's never acted before you know they got an idea but True. they don't know how far they could take it and I think you know when they, they saw your first shit they're like okay we can we can do right, this shit right. right you know cause you have that authenticity and they seen I could uh, memorize a role and I could hold good on camera so I guess that kind of went with it too well rappers are good with memorizing yes, shit you think, about, you think about how many words per verse we got to memorize especially when we get on them shows and we have to go back on a couple of songs you know people, yeah, people crazy. ask me all the time like how you remember and I'll be like man it's just in there but yeah. sometimes I gotta go back and listen to a couple of cuts yeah. Yes, yeah, or read a first word yes indeed because for me it's always the first word if I lose the first word I'm in trouble yes, yeah. but if you know if somebody catches me I might be able to get back exactly. on but it's that first one that always gets you man I never get got in the middle word up now like you you, you took a, you took a pause for a minute from, from shit you know what I mean like and I know people were like man when's he gonna drop another one and and, you know, because people loved your shit. You know, right. you got a distinctive voice. You had your own get down. And motherfuckers have been fucking with you for a long time. So, you know, to hear you come out with a new album like this. Niggas premature, wet dream. Yeah. I'm all for the money, mo cream. Poor head of steam like a chronic cloud. I bang for the West, say it loud. Right. Uh, you know, I got to say, man, for, for West Coast and for hip hop in general, man, it's, it's a solid that you're, you're coming back with which way is West. Well, B, really, I just tried to sit back for a minute and basically concentrate on what was going on at the time. Just trying to fill out music at the time and see what other people was doing as far as, because you know what was going on in the last 10 years with music. Yeah. As far as with what they call in the trap music and a lot of new artists All the popping sub, up. Sub fucking genre shit. Yeah. Exactly. So it just gave me a time to sit back and, you know, pick music I thought was good, you know, and be able to write in the direction of of, of what I was used to and right. where I came from. And just basically try to let dudes burn themselves out. Because you know how music do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Pretty much. You write about that, motherfuckers will burn themselves out like that. Real quick, so it, it gave me the time to sit back, observe, and then work with Primo, you know, because he's been, yeah. he tour and he do all this type of stuff. He be out of the country and all that, so. He keeps it moving, yeah. Exactly, but you got to respect that, and, and it just took me time to sit back and try to get together the best music I thought was possibly good for this project. And what, and what were you feeling like when you were picking when you were picking beats, like, were you feeling the trap shit or more like the old school, you know, 90s sound or a, or a variation of, of both? My direction was to go back to the 90s, you know what I'm saying? 
That's why I called the album Which Way Is West because I just wanted to capture the feel of when music was great to us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not all this, you know, lean, you know, trap music, not to disrespect people's get down. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to capture the music that people loved from us when we was on our good terms. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. the direction of the record was just to get some of that good West Coast feel music. You know what I'm saying? Right on. You know, because, you know, to, 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 to jump on your point, you know, like back in the 90s, a lot of the hip hop that was made there had a lot of layers. Exactly. And everything was distinct, you know, from the rappers rapping over the fucking beats that were distinct as fuck. Mm -hmm. Because every producer had their own sound. You know, all the main producers that we came up that we love. Everybody had, had their flavor. Had their own sound. And the groups had their own sound and distinctive voices. You had a distinctive voice. And let's just say, for instance, the Beastie Boys had a fucking, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a different voice. Uh, rest in peace, Easy E. Everybody had Everybody something had different. Sound. Yeah. Yes, and, and these days, you know, some of the shit, well, a lot of the shit sounds, you know, very similar. Yes. There's not a yeah. lot of distinction, so you can kind of get confused as to who is what and what not, unless you're like everybody really mimicking on. off of each other. That's yeah. what it sounds like. So everything is repetitious right now. So yeah. I just wanted to go back to some of that, you know, that diversity in the hip hop music that we came up on. You know, so that's what was the direction when we started to sit down and put together which way is west. Well, I think that's a great direction because more people are, are leaning more towards towards that sound again. Yeah, we need that though. Yeah. We need that sound. I yeah. mean, not to disrespect whatever the new sound is, but I think that, you know, to keep the, the foundation of what fans knew us from, right. we need that. We right. need that heritage sound that we're known for. So that was my direction for the get down, you know? Nah, but I think people feel that and I think they appreciate that that type of shit because there's not enough of it. Exactly. You know, you have so many artists these days trying to run to what is right now as opposed to doing you right now you know what I mean and, and if doing you right now means like I'm gonna do some shit like this from back in the day like a uh, old boy from uh, from the east coast uh, uh, is it Joey Badass yes definitely. he does like like a you know, like a throwback sound, mm -hmm. but like it sounds right, you know, like right now, but it's like a throwback It's that vintage, sound. that vintage yeah. New York. Vintage New York That's shit. why people like him so good. I even listen to Joey Badass. Because he got a throwback movie. sound, exactly. but he's new. You know, well, newer, you know, he's not like, he doesn't go that far back, but I'm saying like, he would be considered new generation. Right. In terms of like right now. And he is one of like the few that's doing that shit. Exactly. So let me ask you this, you know, you you executive you executive produced this album, right? How how did it feel to sit in that seat? You know what I mean? Because most of the time we're we're artists we write and somebody else is producing the record has a the record company has a fucking executive producer they attached to it. True. But things are different now. We're more independent, we don't have all those middlemen. Right. How did it feel to sit in the executive producers? Well, you know, like I said, it gave me enough time to, you know, put together the project. You know, it gave me, you know, the, you know, the kind of lead way to, to have the, the decision to pick what beats. You know, the pace of the record. I could take my time. You know, and with doing it independently with just me and Primo. You know, it gave us the structure of, of at our own pace, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have people telling us what we needed to do or what kind of marketing plan or y'all should do this or follow these dudes or do what they doing. Basically, being your own boss and being in the business so long that I've been, you kind of know what you need to do with projects or how you need to get out. You know what you need to do to get to your fan base. So being an executive producer with Primo, it gave us the lead way to work at our own pace to me. And, yeah. and to be able to choose what we thought was perfect. Because, you know, record companies probably oh, yeah. been like, you know, y'all need to do what's trendy right now. Yeah, so, they want to do what's marketable. Exactly. So, you know, and not, not, you don't need all that to win anymore. You believe in what you believe in, and we believed in this project and the direction, so that's what was good and comfortable for me. That's fucking tight, man, and it must have been 
you know, that much fucking, you know, dope on the beat right there, you know, side by side with Primo doing it, because, you know, you got a G right there with exactly. a G and a G, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, firsthand, he knows what to do as far as he's in the club still, he's on the road, he's executive, and he's got his own label, and Primo's, you know, a vet in this. So just to have the respect of being able to work with him and have his knowledge on the project was, was, was very, you know, it was very important to me. And you had, like, practically every West Coast heavy hitter on, on the motherfucking album. Man, just to reach out to y'all, you know, you and Rage, Corrupt, Exhibit, and then, you know, we even got people like Big Mike and Bumpy Knuckles, you know, so. Big Bump. Just to get people <laughs> to contribute and, and, and y'all to reach, you know, for me and Primo to be able to reach out and y'all to contribute. Oh, man, everybody, big everybody got love for y'all, man. There was no way that anybody was going to be too busy or say no to y'all, man. And, Fuck, man, no. I appreciate it, B. You know, hey, listen, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. One time, Gal from the Mup was, you know, on repeat in my whip back in the day, bro. Just tell you like that. I was a fan from day one. And when we linked and became friends, man, I, you know, Lifelong. I used to tell my, my homies, my nigga Ocho was solid, boy. All day. Fuck around with Ocho, you know what I'm saying? All day. Good luck. And, and so, you know, with, with this album, you got tour plans? You got to go yeah, on we, uh, the we, road? You know, Primo wants to keep it under wraps, but we talking right now. He just wants to secure the other artists, but we definitely finna go out on the road. We looking like October, you know, November time to go out and get the record out there. About to do another video with Ray. Nice. So we about to get it cracking, V. It's gonna be cracking, It's gonna be on. Hell yeah, man. For sure. I gotta say, man, um, go, go, okay, before, before, uh, I got two more questions to get, because I, you know, I almost got lost in that, because that was fucking awesome right there, but what, what do you, how, how, how do you, how do you, what do you think of Kendrick, you know, representing Compton right now, New West, like, Kendrick is good, he's good for the youth, he's good for the, you know, for, for the old heads too, because he still speaks on the substance of Compton, yes, he does. And, and he speaks on the heritage of, you know, niggas who came up in the struggle and whatnot, so I think he's real good for Compton, like yeah. I said, he's representing to the fullest, he don't forget his roots and where he came from, he's just on the aspect of the new youth, and I respect him for that, I mean, he reached out to me to get down, which shows that... Was that fucking dope. Wake your punk ass up. It ain't nothing but a cop and thing. Chill. Real simple and plain. It, it just shows the, the his 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 importance of knowing what we stood for. He as knows far where as, he came from. Exactly. So that was big, man. It yeah. was real big. I, I thought so too, man. I mean, he's he's one of my favorites right now. Oh man, Kendrick bangs all day. And I gotta just say, man, Compton be producing. You know, motherfuckers out there. We try to get them out there. <laughs> you try, you, get, try you gotta get, get them out there, there man. Try I gotta say, Com- don't stop the rock, Compton. But y'all, y'all got a great track record. We try to get them out there. You know what I'm saying? All right. So uh, obviously, you know, Cali's going recreational next year, right? Do you plan on getting into the biz, or are you just gonna be a connoisseur and appreciate? You know all the, the good flowers. Oh no, I'm trying to work on that right now because that's a that's gonna that's a good business. You yeah, know? it's a great business, it, and especially with the game that you know where I come from as far as the hip hop and establishment, whatever. I think it's a, a lucrative business. It's a smart move that is going recreational. So yeah, I'm I'm talking to growers and stuff right now, trying to get something going. Nice, uh, and motherfuckers would fuck with with anything you fucking touch on. Good luck, I, I know looking. that. Cause motherfuckers got love for you. Good looking. What's what's your favorite strain you like to chief? Man, you know I do, I do a um, I, I like the indica. Yeah, that's insane. OG we blazing yeah, on. I right like now. the that's indica. Really that's, that's 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 me. That's my favorite all day. Word word up, man. I want to thank you for taking the time, chopping it up, smoking out. Tell us about which way is west. Good you know looking, man. Good looking for how me. You know which way is west is out cracking right now. Let's get it cracking. And I gotta tell you, you were requested. For a long time, motherfuckers was requesting you because you 
know in our comment right shit. right they're like man when are you gonna get mca up in there yeah or people what? was hitting me up too like man you need to go on smoke box you need to go on smoke box you know so good looking when you have you go, me see, down it's all fans be asking yes, we indeed. deliver you they know and then, and then it was just gonna happen anyway because we homies and shit exactly. we go back and, you know but I was, now it's perfect timing hell yeah man which way is west make sure you fuck with it fuck with mca yeah. all day and i gotta say Look, before Jay-Z, right. because Jay-Z started rocking your jail in Who his did it way. first. MCA. Originated right here, Gia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gia. Yeah. Good to see you, man. All day. Word up. This has been another Smoke Box. Uh, make a comment, subscribe to the channel. Fuck with MCA. You know what I'm saying? All day West Coasted. Peace. Let me welcome you to the Smoke Box. Windows up, couple in rotation. Hot boxed out about three or four faces.